Is it really worth paying $20 per month for the upgraded ChatGPT 4? Isn't the free version good enough? That's the question for the day, and I'm gonna really put this to the test. I just paid for ChatGPT 4. I'm on the subscription, and I'm gonna run through various different prompts from SEO examples, content marketing, product creation, customer service, sales, and see what ChatGPT4 can come up with versus the free version and do a side-by-side -side test so that ultimately you can decide if this is something that you want to stick with long-term. So without further ado, let's get into it. The first question is, what is the difference between ChatGPT 3.5, the free version, and the paid ChatGPT 4? If we go up here to the top left, ChatGPT 4 is now installed with DALL-E, which is an image creation service. Um, creates realistic images, text description, that kind of stuff. Pretty cool. I'm not really gonna go into crazy depth about that. Maybe I will in a future video. But it says limited to 40 messages in three hours. Um, I don't really, I'm sure that's related to DALL-E. And then ChatGPT 3.5, great for everyday tasks. And you can switch through these, which is kind of cool. You figure you would just stick with ChatGPT 4, though, if you're paying for it. And one other thing is that I have ChatGPT 3.5 opened up. Uh, right here, and then ChatGPT4, you can see down here, there's a couple different options when I go back and forth between 3.5 and 4. So with 3.5, it says create a personal web page for me, give me ideas, make up a story, plan a trip. ChatGPT4 suggests fun activities, come up with concepts, make up a story, explain why popcorn pops. Another thing I noticed down here is that there's this little icon for attaching an image or a PDF of some kind. So let's do this. If I click here, this is a email sequence that I wrote. So, okay. If I say from this PDF, let's see what it does. So it took a minute for it to read the document, but it gave me just a really quick summary. And then I'm sure what I can do is say, turn this summary into bullet points. Well, that does sum up the document, but that's pretty cool that you can add in different PDFs because you can't do that inside of here. So this is great if you have books that you find online or if you download a PDF version of a really big file or document, you can just plug that into ChatGPT. It'll take a minute to read through uh, the PDF and then you can take the main points and turn them into bullet points or whatever you want, which you cannot do on 3.5, the free version. We're gonna move on uh, into some actual prompts and I wanna see the kind of response that ChatGPT4 can produce versus ChatGPT3 when it comes to actually you know growing our business. So I just looked up some ChatGPT prompts. I found this article from SEMrush. I'm gonna link it down below. Uh, pretty cool because they do teach you about how to actually create better prompts, which will be helpful if you're interested in ChatGPT. I have no affiliation with SEMrush. I just looked up something so I didn't have to make up all my own prompts. So we're gonna start with SEO prompts. And let's see what ChatGPT4 can come up with. I'm gonna choose this one, list all the long tail queries related to a specific keyword. We got ChatGPT4, I'm gonna plug it into. And for the keyword, I'm just going to say, I don't know, copywriting. Go here, make sure we're in ChatGPT3, plug that into ChatGPT3. We're gonna hit go and go. Wow, it's crazy how fast ChatGPT 3.5 was, that's the free version, versus the paid version. It took three times as long for it to come up with a response. But what was the quality of the response? That's the real question. So we just asked for long tail queries related to copywriting. How to improve my copywriting skills for e-commerce, examples of effective copywriting and email marketing campaigns, what are the best practices for SEO copywriting, so on. Pretty good questions, long tail, keywords. And over here, for some reason, it bolded all of them, but it said how to write SEO friendly copy for my small business websites, tips for creating compelling email marketing copy in the fashion industry, best practices for writing product descriptions for e-commerce sites, copywriting techniques for increased engagement on social media platforms, writing persuasive sales copy for high ticket items. I mean, I wouldn't call myself an SEO expert, but I feel like the questions that were produced in the free version were actually better than 
the ones in the paid version. That's just my personal opinion. Also, the free version was significantly faster. Let's try another one here. Let's go over to the marketing side and we'll see a good one that we can come up with here. I'm going to use this one right here and see if it can really come up with my weekly newsletter. All right, so I got my prompt in there. Make sure we're on 3.5 and 4. Got my prompt in here. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, again, 3.5, significantly faster. Let's look at the subject line, unlocking your potential, transform your knowledge into online success. Subject line, turning your knowledge into an online business, weekly newsletter. Wow, I'm gonna say, I mean, I'm really impressed with the 3.5, I'm not gonna lie. It sounds more like an actual newsletter. This one just seems like actual kind of content that it's it's putting out, uh, but there's no there's no introduction, there's no... Hey there, welcome to my newsletter. Today we're diving into the exciting world of transforming your knowledge into a thriving online business. Whether you're an expert in a particular field or simply passionate about a hobby, the internet offers a plethora of opportunities to monetize your expertise and create a sustainable online income stream. Let's explore three essential steps to get you started on this journey. What's interesting is that it gave me five, okay? This one though did give me three. And then it went into a little bit extra. I guess these could be like bonuses, but this one feels more like a newsletter, even like best regards your name, like it has a sign off at the end of it. It's really interesting. What did this one come up with? In the realm of online business, the power of specialization cannot be overstated. Identify your unique expertise or passion, be it in technology, art, cooking, or wellness, The ass and assess how it can meet the needs of a specific audience. The step is crucial as it sets the foundation for a targeted and impactful online presence. I feel like the answers are better in ChatGPT4, but I feel like the format and the speed is so much nicer in ChatGPT3. So in terms of content creation with ChatGPT, I have this guide. It's something I created for myself and then it was really helpful just coming up with content ideas, especially when I feel stuck. So I gave it to my clients and they were blown away by it and then I just turned it into something free that I, I give people. So. Uh, you can get this guide by going to profityourknowledge.com slash titles. I'm also going to put a link to it in the description, but I want to see what ChatGPT can come up with based on this guide. So there's a little introduction and this is everything you're going to get. I uh, break it up into curiosity driven titles, list titles, uh, for beginner titles, and they're just content ideas that are proven title formulas that you can use to come up with at least a year's worth of content very fast by just filling in the blanks. Each one has an example of videos that you can look into and you can kind of see what they were doing to make their content work and that kind of stuff. Uh, but yeah, you pretty much just fill in the blanks with your different keywords. So I want to kind of test this because I'm genuinely curious. If I just copy and paste this entire thing over to ChatGPT. I wonder what's gonna happen when I give it a little prompt. Okay, so I said create a list of content ideas for my online business using these keywords, online business, make money online, and content marketing. Use these templates to come up with content ideas. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna paste this into ChatGPT3, and let's see what it comes up with. Wow, okay, I have to say that ChatGPT3, the free version, way faster, but I think that ChatGPT4 was way better. Okay, the ugly truth of online business you don't see. I think I actually made that video a long time ago. Uh, content marketing's de darkest secret. If I were starting an online business in 2024, this is what I do, seven steps. Okay, and I just literally copy and pasted from this document and it generated all these ideas. So, I mean, I could, I could do this with each one of these different sections and have easily a year's worth of content just by changing up the keywords and having ChatGPT do the thinking for me. Pretty cool. Um, ChatGPT4, I would say, is the winner in this case. But even still, ChatGPT3 can still give you some really good ideas. Again, if you want to get this guide, you can get it in the description or just go to profityourknowledge.com slash titles and you can play around with this 
and uh, come up with your own content ideas. So let's go into sales and see what kind of prompts we can use here. This one, write a follow-up email to a lead who has shown interest in our product or service, addressing any concerns they may have and offering additional information. Let's give this one a shot. Let's see what they come up with. All right, again, ChatGPT 3, way faster. ChatGPT 4, though, may have given a better answer. I got to kind of read through this. They both had a similar opening. I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to follow up on your interest in our one-on-one -on -one coaching program and address any concerns or questions you may have. Your enthusiasm for personal growth and development is truly inspiring. We are excited about the prospect of working with you to achieve your goals. Probably wouldn't say that if it was my message. Uh, hope this email finds you well. I'm reaching out to you to follow up on our recent conversation about our one-on-one -on -one coaching program. It was great to hear about your interest in personal development and how our program could potentially fit into your journey. Way better response. This looks like ChatGPT, but this one, the, the paid version, sounds more like an actual person, which is kind of trippy but it's, it's cool. It is really crazy how much faster the free version is than the paid version, but it's actually doing a lot more thinking, which I think is pretty fascinating and kind of scary. This overall message is much more enticing than this one. So I, I'm going to say ChatGPT4 is going to be the winner on this. Okay, so I just wrote in a prompt. I said, create a product outline for an online course about how to start and grow a number one ranking podcast on Spotify. Let's see what they can come up with. Here we go. Okay, so two very in-depth descriptions that they came up with and curriculum in general. And I mean, whether you use this completely or not, that's pretty impressive. Uh, the entire outline, the module breakdown. Okay, learn the step-by-step -step process to create, launch, and grow a successful podcast on Spotify they can reach the coveted number one ranking. This comprehensive course provides step-by-step -step guidance on creating, launching, and growing a successful podcast with a specific focus on achieving top rankings on Spotify. Cool, so even coming up with your course descriptions, that's great inside of here. Obviously, it was much faster inside of 3.5. So there's only seven modules in this one. In this one, there are 12 modules, which is pretty wild. Course feature, that's a big course. Course features, bonus material, that is helpful. This one didn't give us any bonus material that I'm seeing. So I don't know, there are pros and cons to both of them. I mean, just the fact that it came up with bonus material is the fact that you, that really helps you, the content creator, because you can be like, I didn't even think of adding something like that. Interviews with podcasting experts, case studies of successful Spotify podcasts, Lots of cool stuff, course format, course duration. Okay, there, there's pros and cons between both of these. So in the end, is ChatGPT4 really worth the extra $20 per month to use it? Well, I hope you can see from these different examples that there's pros and cons to both of them. ChatGPT 3.5, the free version, is significantly faster. And sometimes it can create even better responses than the paid version of ChatGPT4. But you can tell when you put in a response that the paid version of ChatGPT4 it's thinking a lot more, and I feel like it did produce better quality results overall. It's something you do have to play around with more. I think it's worth paying the extra 20 bucks and even using, even creating uh, an outline in both of them or creating some sort of uh, prompt in each one, because when you're inside a ChatGPT, you can switch between three and four simultaneously anytime you want. You can have three open uh, in one window and then ChatGPT4 open in another window like I did throughout this tutorial. And I think it could be helpful to generate something really fast in ChatGPT3 as kind of a baseline and then put that into ChatGPT4 to refine it and turn it into something even better instead of you having to manually go through and um, you know create a blog post or something like that because ChatGPT4 does a lot more thinking and it's definitely smarter, you can tell overall. So I think that by investing in it, 
it could be a good call, especially if you're serious about really harnessing the power of AI and using it more. $20 a month is not a lot of money for most people, you know, and if you're really using this and it's helping you come up with content ideas without you having to think as much, it could be really worth it. So I'm going to keep paying for it and playing around with ChatGPT4 because I like to use ChatGPT. And I think that this is going to be a fun little addition to the tech stack. Let me know what your thoughts are about what you saw in this tutorial down in a comment below. And if this video was helpful, please do give it a thumbs up. I'll see you in the next one.